I would like to take this time out to deal with a question that was asked on my Magnificent Minister channel. It was a question that was asked on the video, The Devil's Pawn Shop. What would you give in exchange for your soul? And the question reads as follows. So you are saying that our loving Lord God can also be angry and vengeful? And then she says, this is interesting because, like you said, so many people think that the blood of Jesus will cover all sins regardless. And she's correct. There are people that believe that the blood of Jesus can cleanse or cover all sins regardless of what they do. And that is so incorrect. That is so incorrect. And I said to her that I would make a video responding to that question. Because yes, God can be very angry and vengeful. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, a few very short scriptures. The first one is taken from the book of Psalms 7 and 11, and it reads as follows. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. So yes, the loving God can and will be angry with the wicked every day. The next scripture is taken from the book of Psalms, not palms, because I know some of y'all would say palms. It's not palms. But from the book of Psalms, the 59th chapter, reading the 13th verse, and it reads as follow. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be, in other words, that they may not exist any longer. And then it says, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Selah. That's in the book of Psalms. The next scripture is taken from the book of Ezekiel, the 25th chapter, reading the 17th verse, and it reads as follows. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. I read that again. For those of you that feel you can do anything and God will forgive you, you think that God will just accept anything that you that you pour upon him, anything that you choose to do in the imagination of your mind, you feel and think that God will just forgive you. But Ezekiel says, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I shall lay my vengeance upon them. See, many people don't fear God no more. There used to be a time when people would fear God. There used to be a time when children would fear their parents, especially their fathers. There used to be a cartoon that came on TV titled, Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. So when a child acts out, the moms can't handle the child. So the moms would always say, wait until your father gets home, because when the father gets home, although he's a loving father and he cares about his children. Because of the evil that they do, because of the fact that the child was so disrespectful and disobedient. The father is surely to execute vengeance 
and judgment upon that child, although he loves that child. I'm reminded of a scripture that says, whom the Lord loves, he chasteneth. I've met so many young men that grew up without their father that said they wish they had their father to get in their case when they do something wrong because mothers are a lot softer. And many moms let their sons get away with murder just because they're boys. And I'm sure you guys heard Many parents say boys will be boys. So just let them do what they want to do. But there are so many young boys that's growing up without that strictness, that father figure in the home. And they're allowed to just basically raise themselves because the moms can't handle them. So there are so many young boys out there that wish they had a father to take vengeance upon their wrongdoing. They wish they had a father that would be angry with them. Although he's a loving father. And there's many women that's the same way. There's women that don't like weak men. Men that always allow women to do what they want to do. Women basically run the show and she run that man and women don't have respect for that man because he's weak. He's a yes man. And he gives her everything that she asked for. So again, Ezekiel 25 and 17 says, And I will exec execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. I remember when we did wrong, my father came home. There were times I would get in the bed and cover up and try to go to sleep to keep from having to deal with my father when he got home. But he always woke me up. <laughs> he take off that belt and he go to work. So we never got away with stuff like that, like the young people do nowadays. And it helps. Doesn't hurt that child. It helps that child. It makes that child understand that there are consequences to your actions. So you just can't expect a parent to be loving and not get angry with you at times or take vengeance out on you or better yet, discipline you. So it says, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. In other words, he's angry. And they shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, like many heard your parents say, you're going to respect me. And they shall know that I am the Lord. When I shall lay my vengeance upon them. The next scripture is taken from the book of Revelation. The 16th chapter, the first verse. And it reads as follow. And I'm sure you already got the point. But I just want to give you more scriptures to back up what I say. And just, instead of just giving you one or two verses, I give you a few. Revelation 16 and 1 says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways. And pour out the vials of the wrath of God. Now, the wrath of God is the anger of God upon the earth. I read that again. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels. Go your ways and pour out the vials upon the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. In other words, God is about to take vengeance upon the earth for the evil that men and women do. The next scripture is taken from the book of Nahum, the first chapter, reading the first, better yet, 
reading from the second to the sixth verse, Nahum six and two to the sixth verse. And it reads as follow and pay close attention. And this is answering her question. Does our loving God become angry and vengeful? The second verse says, God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. In other words, he's angry. The Lord would take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves the wrath for his enemies. The third verse says, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. In other words, they will not get away with what we see happening today, especially in the church, because according to the scriptures, judgment will begin at the house of God first. It will begin in the church. It says the Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The fourth verse says he rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dryeth up all the rivers. But Sean languish and Carmel and the flowers of Lebanon languish. The mountains quake at him, just his very presence. The mountains quake and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. And the sixth verse says, who can stand before his indignation? In other words, who can stand before his anger and his fury? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. So yes, God, that loving God, that everyone loves to say God is forgiving, God is merciful. Yes, he is all of that. But you reap what you sow. So yes, our loving and forgiving God is angry and vengeful at the evil that people do. And the question came to my mind, is now we're living in times where you have the LGBTQ community and you have churches that have gone away from teaching holiness and teaching the wrath of God to saying that God loves and accepts everyone, which is not true. That's a lie from the very pits of hell. So you mean to tell me that a holy God would forgive a transsexual, a man, a person that was born a man, now transforms or transfigures himself to be a woman, have his private parts cut off and tucked under. And start taking medication to help him to grow breast. He becomes a woman. And the same with a woman that wants to become a man. You mean to tell me that the same transformer could one day say that they are saved? They've accepted God's word. They were convicted by God's word. And you mean to tell me that God would show mercy upon this 
person. That means God will go against his own words. In the book of Leviticus. And you know what that word says. So you mean to tell me this person that didn't like the way God created him to be. Went through the procedures, paid the money to become a woman, to change himself. And now he can sit so comfortably in the church or give a testimony or his story on his journey, as they say now. And you're supposed to accept that without any repercussions. I want to say that when it comes to transgenders, this is nothing new. Transgenders have always been around since the beginning or before the foundations of the earth. The Bible, or better yet, the Gnostic texts refer to them as androgynous. In other portions of those scriptures, they refer to them as androgynous demons. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. This is not hatred towards anyone. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And there's too many people that's in bondage, even with the church and the scriptures and religion. Because you're living a lie. Thinking that God loves you and cares about you. Yes, he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him and that whosoever is not everyone. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Christ, might be saved. But there's still limitations. There are still limitations. I want to read the last and final scripture. Take it from the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, reading the 23rd to the 31st verse. And it reads as follow. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God. A covenant is an agreement which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. In other words, he told you not to. He forbade you to do those things. But you did them anyway. So it's saying, remember the, the agreement, the, the covenant that you made with the Most High. And that the Most High made with you. The 24th verse says, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. In other words, that, con that consuming fire burns up anything and everything that's not like him. The, 21st, the 25th verse says, When thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. See, yes, the Lord get anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. 
Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. That's the angry God that's taking vengeance upon the wicked. The 27th verse says, And the Lord shall scatter you among all the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. And there, and there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence, in other words, if from that place, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, the 30th verse says, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, which we now live, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice. The 31st verse says, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God, although he gets angry, and although he take vengeance upon those that do evil. The Bible says he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant, the agreement, of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his word. So yes, our loving, caring, forgiving God is also angry and vengeful every day because of the wickedness that men and women do upon the earth. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe. Until next time, I'm fearless.